When it comes to reading comic books, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, where do I start? Specifically, I get a lot of questions about Spider-Man. Dude's had issues coming out since the 60s. How do you just like jump in and start reading if you're reading for enjoyment? Do you have to like start in 1960? Do you start, I don't know, I don't even know where to begin. Don't worry, I got you covered. We're gonna figure this out and I have some great information for you if you wanna start reading Spider-Man today. Stick around. What's going on everybody? My name is Matt, sometimes called Big Nerdy, and this is Nerds. I wanna to talk to you today about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is starting reading comics. I actually started to read comics back in the late 90s, but I only read Star Wars, and that's how it stuck around for like 10 years. I didn't read a non-Star Wars comic book until it was like 2007, 2008. And I bought an issue of Civil War, not knowing that I couldn't just buy it and start reading. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And that was it. I was done with comic books for five years because I completely jumped in at the wrong point. I'm gonna save you that problem though. You're not gonna be in my boat because I'm gonna show you where to jump in and where to jump in with Spider-Man. Now you might know that there's actually two main people who have portrayed Spider-Man over the years. There's Peter Parker who's been around since the 60s and then about, my God, almost 10 years ago now, Miles Morales was introduced and he has been just like skyrocketing in popularity. So a lot of people ask me about him, like, hey, I wanna read about Miles. But for this video, we're not gonna talk about Miles. We'll save Miles for another video. If you guys are interested, I'll make a video about how to go ahead about reading his books. Today, we're just focused on Peter Parker. Here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna talk about some quick origin primers if you wanna to touch base on that. We're gonna talk about jumping on points. And we're gonna talk about some of my favorite Spider-Man stories that you can just go and jump in to read today. So let's start off and talk about some quick origin story primers. I have two options for you. First of all, you can get on the Marvel Comics Universe app and read the original origin story, which is Amazing Fantasy 15, written like 50 or 40 years ago. And I think that was uh, Stan Lee who actually wrote that. But that is the original origin story and it still holds up pretty well today. If you want something a little bit more modern, a few years ago, they did a series of graphic novels. They were called the season one graphic novels. And it's basically an origin story for all the major players in the Marvel universe, Spider-Man as well. I actually don't have that one. You can see in my background, I do have quite a few. Daredevil, Doc, uh, bleh, I must have Doc Ock. Doctor Strange, Thor, the Hulk. I ended up getting them in a comic convention for like $3 a piece, I couldn't say no. But all of them are on the Marvel Universe app. So if you want a good origin story, I recommend starting there. It's 100 pages and you get a really nice, concise, okay, so this is how Spider-Man came to be and why he is the way he is. When it comes to simple jumping on points, I have three options for you. The first is in 1999 with Spider-Man number one, specifically Amazing Spider-Man number one. So they did a the first relaunch of that title. So that title, The Amazing Spider-Man, had been running since the 60s. They relaunched it with a new number one. So they didn't do a new origin story or anything, but it was friendly to new readers. So if you wanted to go back like 20 years, that's a great place to start. If you don't want to go back that far, the place I actually recommend is Dan Slott's run. So when he started was 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check my notes. It was indeed 2008. So his first uh, run was called Brand New Day. Really, really good story, and it really sets up the rest of his run, which went on for like 10 years. It's the longest Spider-Man run in Marvel history. If you wanna have a bunch of Spider-Man comics to read in continuity, but you don't wanna go back to like, you know, before the turn of the millennium, this is a great place to start. Now, if you wanna go with just the modern books and you wanna be up to date with modern continuity so you can keep up with new comics that are coming out, the newest run of Amazing Spider-Man started by Nick Spencer in 2018. They're up to the mid 60s as I record this video, but I'm personally like 40 issues behind right now. All right, now let's talk some crazy talk. Let's talk full reading orders. You wanna read everything. I have two options for you. We're gonna head on over to a couple websites here on the computer. The first one is comicbookherald.com, which has a bunch of different reading lists for comics. This is not my favorite site because it lists everything by book and not by issue so much. It's in there, but you have to look for it. Whereas the other site I'm gonna show you is more set up to be used with the app. But if you wanna read actual physical copies of the books, this website's great. You can head on over to it and you'll see, which is linked in the description by the way, all of the modern books for Spider-Man. This doesn't go back all the way, but it, it goes back pretty far. Again, this is if you wanna be able to read in paperback. Now, if you wanna read digital, I recommend going to comicbookreadingorders.com, aptly named. Here, we're gonna to go to characters and we're gonna find ourselves Spider-Man and boom, look at this, 963 issues. 
I love this website. Like this is one of my favorite sites for comic books. If you go down here, you can see they break it out between single issues and they have trade paperbacks coming soon. It's not up to date yet, but for single issues, this is perfect to use with the app or you can go get the issues if you're a crazy person. One thing that you will see is that it actually breaks away from the main point for limited series right here, Craven's Last Hunt. So rather than list that in, since that's a major story arc, you can just click it and boom. Seven issues in Craven's Last Hunt. Okay, so your mind's racing. I've given you a ton of options. You know where you can start. You know where you can just jump right in. I'm gonna give you one more option here as far as Spider-Man reading goes. You could just pick random stories and read them. Here are some of my favorites. So first off, the Night Gwen Stacy died. I don't know if I should call it a favorite, but it's a two issue run. It's uh, 121 to 122. The plot's pretty obvious. It's in the title, but it literally is everything that happens with Spider-Man and his mindset and everything about him changes that night. And without knowing that, it's really hard to understand the context of everything that happens after. I also recommend Maximum Carnage, which was a 14 issue run from the early 90s. I swear, I think the reason I love this run so much is because of the Super Nintendo game that they had from it back in the, I think it was 93 or 94. I actually remember the game more than the run, but I do remember it being pretty darn good and I recommend you to go check it out. Another run I read when it came out a few years ago that was awesome was Superior Spider-Man. In a nutshell, Doc Ock takes over Peter Parker's body and becomes Spider-Man and decides, I can do this better. It's really, really good. It's funny and it's also kind of moving in ways because he's trying to be better, but he can't. Check it out. A limited run that you might want to check out, and I just read this about two weeks ago, was Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb or Jeb Loeb. I don't know how to say his first name. It's an older run from back in 2002. It looks at Peter's younger years when he first meets MJ and he's courting Gwen. And it's kind of awkward, the dialogue, specifically MJ's dialogue, but at the same time, it's like, huh. It's also kind of heart-wrenching because it follows Peter speaking into a tape recorder on Valentine's Day, saying things to Gwen that he never got a chance to say. So yeah, it's kind of depressing at the same time. Reading comic books is something that brings me great peace in this world. I find it infinitely relaxing and fun, but collecting comics has me very intrigued. I didn't start collecting and saving comic books until adulthood, so I never got to experience finding an older book worth money in a long box. If you collected comic books in the 90s, you might have some gold sitting in a closet somewhere. Check this video out, see if you're rich. Till next time, be cool, stay nerdy. Later.